Channel 2 Sports presents the G.I. Joe's Grand Prix Special. Brought to you by G.I. Joe's. For automotive, sporting goods, hardware, and all your back-to-school needs. By your Portland area Toyota dealers. Home of the number one selling small trucks in the Northwest. By Castrol. Motor oil engineered for today's smaller, higher revving engines. And by Godfather's Pizza. A pizza you can't refuse. Now, here is Channel 2 Sports Director, Steve Arena. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to present this G.I. Joe's Grand Prix. Five races are on tap today. Three of those will be taking place at once in the featured three-hour Camel GT. And, of course, when you talk about three hours of racing, you talk about pit stops. Let's go down to Steve Wick for a quick preview from the pits. Steve, this area will be very active today, especially an hour to an hour and a half into the race. That's when the drivers will be making their first stops to change drivers, tires, and to refuel. We'll be here throughout the day to keep you posted on the race. Steve, back to you. All right, we're only minutes away from the green flag. Let's take a quick look at the drivers. The man tearing up the Camel GT standings right now is Al Holbert. His team has five wins already. They drive a Porsche March. Jim Truman is the co-driver, but he's not in town this weekend. Holbert will drive alone. Second in point standings is Bob Tullius in a Jaguar. He teams up with Bill Adam. Now a dark horse could be Hurley Haywood in a Lola, powered with a Porsche engine. The GTO competition has been all this man, Wayne Baker, and his co-driver, Jim Mullen. They're currently 1-2 in standings in a Porsche 934. But a team that could be favored in this race is Don Devendorf and Tony Adamowitz. They've teamed up to win the last two races on the circuit in their Datsun ZX Turbo. The GTU competition is a real battle. Roger Mandeville and his co-driver, Amos Johnson, lead, but Jim Downing is right behind just seven points in back of Mandeville. John Mafucci co-drives. Joe Vardy is third in standings. His team won at Sears Point last week. The top three teams drive Mazda RX-7s. Here's what they have to tackle, a 1.9 mile race course, relatively flat, with two long straights and nine turns. The weather conditions are not as hot as expected, 82 degrees at race time, the humidity stands at 50%. You can see we're about ready, the pace car is off the track, the field is approaching the green flag, and we have a start. The number 44 Jaguar has the pull. Bob Tullius is behind the wheel. They go flying down the long straightaway. And look at Al Holbert in number 14. Remember, he's driving all by himself today. He has no co-driver, and he takes the lead going into turn number one. Holbert has showed us he wants to take control of this race right off the bat. He feels he needs to get off to a good start to have a good chance in this race. With a Porsche engine car, we have to stop twice in three hours. There's just no way we can stretch it. The Jaguar and the Chevrolets can just about do it with one stop. So right away, you can see that on the racetrack, we have to g gain uh, at least as much time as one pit stop. Now, if we end up running nose to tail the whole time, we've lost the race. And there you see car number 14, a Porsche March driven by Al Holbert leading early in the Camel GT. The Jaguar right behind has been an interesting story this year. This is the only such car on the circuit. Bob Tullius and Bill Adam are the men doing the driving. Tullius is the starting driver. The season's been pretty good. Um, as I've explained, the, um, the car's brand new. It's its very first year of full-time competition. It's the very first year of Group 44's full-time competition in this arena, so to speak. And to bring two brand new uh, parts of, uh, of this program together and make them as successful as we have been. We have won two races. I don't mean to diminish that by any means, but to, to come along and uh, uh, we, we've got some bugs to work out of it, and we're, but we're pleased with the progress at this point. It'd be, it's kind of like a, uh, an expansion franchise. You know, it takes them a while to get going. Well, we're an expansion franchise. We, it's going to take us a while to get going, but we have won a couple of races as opposed to the big zeros that some of the expansion franchises pull. And there you see the leaders, Holbert in car number 14, Tullius in the 44 Jaguar. They're running a close 1-2 early in the three-hour featured race. Both of these drivers are well-respected by their peers. They both have excellent driving records. Holbert has a handle on the series this year, winning five races to this point. But can you believe he's not favored to win this race? 
The Jaguars' fuel economy is a big story. It could complete the three hours with just one pit stop, while the others must make two. Listen to the number two man on the grid, John Fitzpatrick. Well, no, I don't feel uneasy. I mean, I enjoy competition. You know, I like a race, uh, and those guys can certainly give us a race. I think if I was going to pick out uh, a winner of all those fellas, if we can't win ourselves, I think the Jaguar must be favorite, having only to make one pit stop and being able to run as fast as everyone else. So I think uh, if, if, if we can't win, I think the Jaguar might win. Well, one thing is certain, Fitzpatrick will not win today's event. His car suffered heavy damage in the practice session this morning. It was unable to make this afternoon's race. But Bob Lobenberg and John Morton were in this Chevy Lola. Watch this team closely. They could give Holbert and the Jaguars some problems, but they have their work cut out for themselves this afternoon. The problem that we're, we're faced with is the fact that uh, the turbocharged cars have a, a much greater straight line speed. And at this track, you have two very long straightaways that give them a distinct advantage. What we're trying to do is get the car to work as well in the turns as possible so that maybe we can make up a little bit that we have lost down the straightaway. Already, the leaders are catching up with the slower cars that are beginning to lap some of the entries. Holbert is still your leader. And look at this piece of driving on turn one. He makes it past the slower car before Tullius can. And the Jaguar is stuck. There goes Holbert. Tullius cannot get past that slower car, number 19. And Holbert is building a nice little cushion right here. There's the first break in the race. Holbert is able to get some breathing room for the first time from the Jaguar today. As this race progresses, look for the Jag on the straightaways. If it's going to make a move, Tullius says the long straights at PIR will play in his car's favor. Our car is a straightaway car. It's, uh, although it does handle really well in the corners, uh, it was designed specifically for long, long distance racing, uh, 12 and 24 hour races, and uh, it has probably the best aerodynamic shape of any car in the world, and the longer the straights, the better. We do very well at Daytona, and use, well, at Brainerd, uh, we, were, we were very successful, a, a good, um, oh, maybe three quarter of a mile straight with a 175 mile corner at the end of it. Uh, this car was outstanding in that respect. Right now, Tullius and his Jaguar need to make up some room on those straightaways because Al Holbert is building an edge right now. There are your leaders. More from the G.I. Joe's Grand Prix after a quick timeout. A sports car performing on a racetrack? That's expected. A Toyota SR5 sport truck doing it? That's incredible. But it's this kind of incredible performance that's helped make Toyota the number one selling line of import trucks in America. And as incredible as this Toyota handles, that's how smooth and comfortable it rides. That's incredible. That's doing it right. Oh, 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 oh what a feeling, Toyota. Yesterday's engines didn't have to work hard to power the average car. Today's smaller engines don't have it so easy. They rev higher and work harder. That's why there's Castrol. Even at high revs, Castrol doesn't suffer a significant loss of viscosity. And that's important, because if you make things too hard on your engine, your engine could make things hard on you. Castrol, engineered for smaller cars. Castrol 1040 and 2050 on sale this week for 89 cents at G.I. Joe's. If you got plans coming up, change them. Rearrange them. Do it, do it, do it. Because you can get a large Godfather's pizza for the price of a medium. No coupon, just say a pizza you can't refuse when you order. Get a large for the price of a medium and do it soon. Do it, do it, do it. Got it? Order one. Order a dozen. But say a pizza you can't refuse when you order and get a large for the price of a medium. Do it, Godfather's pizza. Offer ends August 4th. The four-wheel drive decathlon. Ten reasons Toyota is the best-selling import 4x4 in America. This Toyota takes on hills, trails, streams, and mud holes. It clears rocks, it takes on deserts and beaches. It's built to work and play. This Toyota's a champion at doing it right.
Back at the Grand Prix, the leader remains Al Holbert, and he is indeed running a smooth race. The Jaguar is in second, but right now, no threat to Holbert, who's carrying out his game plan to perfection. We can't say the same for the Hurley Haywood crew. They're off to a bad start. They missed the beginning of the race with wheel bearing trouble. Once they made it on the track, more problems strike immediately to Steve Wick in the pits. Steven with Tom Nishimura, manager of Hurley Haywood's team. Uh, what's the problem? The exhaust impeller on the uh, turbocharger came off and it caused, a, uh, caused us to lose the turbo, of course. So we've got, to, uh, we've got a new turbo, we're putting it on. Probably went out, uh, twisted a little bit too hard, you know, got hot, got cold, and just came apart, really. Problems are not new to Hurley Haywood this year. You see he's back on the track now. This team has a unique setup, a Lola powered by Porsche. And to this point, their season has been one big problem. I'm a big believer in the old Mark Donahue method of the unfair advantage. You want to have a car that's so much better than everybody else's that you don't have to try so hard. When you're in a car that has, in, in a development program, it's a little bit frustrating because you know the car has a potential, but it's just getting that potential out of it. And it, all it involves is just time and, and effort. And we have just thousands of man hours in this car on the development time on it. And it's finally beginning to pay off and the car is becoming more and more competitive. So we're happy on that one. But from, from the standpoint of my, in my position, it's frustrating to be out there and trying hard and not really going anywhere. Well, your leader, Al Holbert, is definitely going somewhere right now. He's steadily increasing his lead over the second place Jaguar. Remember, Holbert has no co-driver today. He'll be driving the entire three-hour race by himself. Listen to his strategy. You know, what happens is more and more in the longer races, you end up, you know, racing against yourself, the elements in the racetrack, as opposed to the other guy. Um, you're trying to run a race according to the strategy that you laid out. Of course, you have to be willing and able to adapt your strategy if the conditions change. Um, but for example, we'll go into this race with a lap time that we think will win the race. And uh, that'll be based on uh, <clears throat> what we can do, how hard we have to run the car to do that lap time, and, and uh, where that puts us relative to the other cars. Remember, there's still a long way to go in this race. Holbert looks strong right now, but a lot of things can happen. Back to the second place Jaguar. This car led by two minutes last week at Sears Point with less than an hour to race, and it broke, winding up 15th when the race finally ended. The last thing Tullius and his crew are thinking right now is panic. Actually, it sounds as if they're right where they want to be. They don't have a history of starting out fast. Here's co-driver Bill Adam. Bob and I tend to drive very similar in our, our basic concepts of racing and that uh, we feel it's not really too important to lead a race in the first hour or the first 50% of a race, but it's much more important to be in the lead during the last part. So quite often, we'll tend to maybe lay back a little bit on the opening laps and let the, uh, the hot shoes go and burn themselves out. Uh, and this, it happens frequently. Bob has such a proven record and uh, he taught me that very early in, in my career with Group 44 that uh, it just simply wasn't important to go out and make a show at the start. It's uh, who crosses the finish line first and his record speaks for itself there. He's extremely successful. Interesting philosophy. Okay, Al Holbert still leads the GT. Tullius and Adam in the Jaguar are second. jean Piero Moretti is third. Here's your first look at the GTO leader, Don Devendorf and co-driver Tony Adamowitz in this Datsun ZX. Devendorf won here at PIR last year. He ran away with the series championship as well. But this year has been a totally different story. Nagging problems have kept the two out of the winner's circle for the most part in 1983. You know, we're learning stuff and uh, uh, I think we're doing a pretty good job. And I think uh, as long as we keep chasing after and fixing each of these problems, you know, doing a proper you know, fix for the problems and really understanding why these things happen, then uh, you know, we're making progress and uh, we look to the future. Devendorf is driving the first leg of this race and his team is learning from all the frustrating problems. They come to Portland running very strong. In fact, they have a two race winning streak on the line today, so watch them carefully. In the third and final category in this race, Joe Vardy and Rick Noop in this Mazda RX-7 are currently leading the GTU competition. Vardy is an interesting story. He's keeping extremely busy. 
For example, last week he drove in three races at Sears Point, and today's the same. He battled in the champion spark plug and the Kelly American race before hopping into this car, which currently leads the three-hour GTU competition. It's all I know how to do is race, and I, I started driving these sports cars, uh, sports car racing, and I've kind of picked it up, and I like it. And uh, I'm earning a living doing it, not a real big living, but just a little bit is paying for my racing. And uh, if you can get paid to do something you like to do, I, you know, uh, you're happy. You know, we're happy. Well, in the racing world, they say happiness is a clean, fast pit stop. Of course, this three-hour race calls for cars to drop by pit row for some fast work, and that should be taking place in the next few minutes. To give you a better idea on what happens when the cars come off the track, here's a quick preview. Maybe the most important period of time in a car race, the pit stop. So many things to be done in so little time. The goal is changing all four tires, refueling the car with some 30 gallons, and changing drivers, all in about 35 seconds. The one quality that I think every pit crew member has to have, uh, whether it's Group 44 or any team here, is, is dedication. It, uh, it just simply can't be bought. Uh, you have to be born with it or, or want to do it. You have to uh, be very cool because frequently when a car does come into the pits, uh, it's with an emergency problem. Or even when it's not an emergency, you have to do things so quickly that you have to, you have to be uh, aware of an orderly system to follow. Be very regimented and uh, go through your system as quickly as possible, but without getting nervous where you could potentially make a mistake. As you know, a mistake in the pits could be devastating. That's why all the crews have practiced and trained hard for these very important 35 to 40 seconds. Well, a major story has broken in the Jaguar camp. Their car came in way early for a pit stop. Let's go to Steve Witt. Steve here with Bob Tullius of the 44 Jaguar. Bob, you had a pit stop a little earlier than expected. Uh, any problems? Yeah, the temperature was creeping up in the engine, and we wanted to get some water in it before it um, got too hot. When it gets really hot, you can't put the water in it because it'll instantly boil and boil right back out again. But it um, uh, was getting a little bit hotter than it should, and. Uh, we're going to have trouble with that this afternoon. Uh, it's uh, questionable at this point how long it will go. Do you think it's going to cost you the race? Uh, there's a really good chance of that, yeah. There you have it. The Jaguar team in a bit of trouble. Bob Tullius out of the car. Bill Adam is now on the racetrack trying to catch this man, Al Holbert. He's our clear-cut leader to this point, driving a smooth race without a pit stop yet. Back with more from the G.I. Joe's Grand Prix after this commercial break. G.I. Joe's and Nike Sportswear. Looking good for back to school. Because Joe's has great looking Nike Sportswear styles. Sleek Nike Windrunner jackets and pants. Smart elastic waist twills. Boys texturized nylon pants with reflective Nike swoosh. Go with the winners. Nike's action sportswear styles from G.I. Joe's. Where you'll find everything for back to school. Go for it, G.I. Joe's. A sports car performing on a racetrack, that's expected. A Toyota SR5 sport truck doing it, that's incredible. But it's this kind of incredible performance that's helped make Toyota the number one selling line of import trucks in America. And as incredible as this Toyota handles, that's how smooth and comfortable it rides. That's incredible. That's doing it right. Oh, 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 oh what a feeling, Toyota. Yesterday's engines didn't have to work hard to power the average car. Today's smaller engines don't have it so easy. They rev higher and work harder. That's why there's Castrol. Even at high revs, Castrol doesn't suffer a significant loss of viscosity. And that's important, because if you make things too hard on your engine, your engine could make things hard on you. Castrol, engineered for smaller cars. Castrol 1040 and 2050 on sale this week for 89 cents at G.I. Joe's. The four-wheel drive decathlon. Ten reasons Toyota is the best-selling import 4x4 in America. This Toyota takes on hills, trails, streams, and mud holes. It clears rocks, it takes on deserts and beaches. It's built to work and play. This Toyota's a champion at doing it right. Oh, 
We're back. No change. Al Holbert, the man who can clinch the series championship with a victory today, is all alone in first place right now as we complete the first hour of this race. But a big story unfolding involves this, number 30 Porsche, driven by jean Piero Moretti. He's currently moved into second place ahead of the Jaguar, some 40 seconds behind Holbert. Moretti's had troubles all weekend trying to dial in his car, but to this point it looks as if his preparation is right on the money. Here's more on the man in second place. Walking in the pits on a Friday or Saturday during the IMSA series, you'll always see a crowd at the jean Piero Moretti camp. Moretti's an excellent driver and chef. You see, jean Piero's pasta is tradition wherever he goes, especially is served for lunch. Anybody's invited. Why I have started to do pasta is just because my team many years ago was, um, was Italian and they didn't like uh, hamburger and hot dogs, so they asked me why we don't buy just a little uh, kitchen and do something for, uh, for us, I mean, for five people. But then other race driver came and want to try and try the pasta, and so every day we have more and more people, so now I have to do pasta for 30, 40 people every day. I mean, Friday and Saturday, I don't cook Sunday. Because he races on Sunday, he races very well. Gian Piero Moretti, his Porsche and pasta, are big hits on the IMSA circuit. Again, Moretti driving an excellent race to this point, standing second behind Al Holbert in the GT competition. News in the pits, Joe Vardy and Rick Noop are having problems, and they've lost their lead in the GTU competition. They're forced to change a gear shift lever right now, and that's knocked them down in the standings. On the racetrack, here's your new GTU leader, Roger Mandeville driving the car right now, and Amos Johnson in this number 38 Mazda RX-7. Moving up in the GT standings to fourth place is the number 12 Chevy March, driven by Al Leon and Doc Bundy. They got off to a slow start, but they're battling back. Down to Steve in the pits. We're having a lot of problem. Uh, in order to go fast, I'm cooking the left rear. And, uh, it looks like we're going to have to change that tire every stop. And I ran out of gas out there and had to turn the reserve on, so we fell way behind our game plan. Spin out cost you, too. Oh, did it ever. <laughs> that was dumb. Still no change in the lead. Al Holbert continues to drive a perfect race. He's building his lead to almost a lap now over second place jean Piero Moretti. Holbert and his crew have already won five races this year. They're running away with the series championship. In doing so, they're gaining respect from the competition. He's tough to beat. I mean, Al, Al has driven with me in long distance races before. Uh, he and I were co-partners at uh, Le Mans this year when we won. And he's, uh, not only is he a good driver, but he's also a terrific engineer. So he's got his act so well together this year that the rest of us are all playing, trying to play catch up to him and, and try to get as, as good uh, as he is. And it's just, uh, for some reason, he's uh, 10 yards ahead of us all the time. No different this week. Al Holbert is a lot more than 10 yards ahead of his competition so far, but he's still waiting for his first pit stop. Let's break away from this three-hour event for a moment to show you another race that took place today. It's called the Champion Spark Plug Challenge. And the Champion Spark Plug Challenge has been dominated by Joe Vardy in a Dodge Charger. He's won five of ten races. As usual, the Archer brothers, Bobby and Tommy, are having good years in Renault alliances. They're currently four and five in the standings with 61 and 60 points, respectively. This race is traditionally hard fought, close, and exciting, and this year is no different. A dogfight begins right off the bat. Cal Choquette leading right here, and Joe Vardy just behind. They get it going early in the race, and their battle begins to heat up. Watch Vardy pass right here on turn one as we take you inside Choquette's car for a first-hand look at what the driver is seeing. A great shot detailing what Choquette has to put up with inside the car. And this race, he had to put up with Joe Vardy most of the way. These two went at it relentlessly. Choquette tried to shake Vardy, but he couldn't. Finally, late in the race, his break comes. Vardy's car has mechanical problems. It slows down immediately, and that pretty much does it. Choquette just needs to drive through the slower cars and stay out of trouble, and that's exactly what he does. Last week, Choquette broke down at Sears Point. This week, his car performs like a gem. Cal Choquette takes the checkered flag to win this year's champion spark plug challenge. When you're running with Joe Vardy, you really have to go 100%. You have to get 
everything that the car has to offer, get it out and put it on the track. And uh, barring that, it would be a walk away for him. And it was Choquette pulling off the walk away today, going all out to hold off this competition. Cal finished first, Bobby Archer was second, and Portland's Richard Gordon wound up third. Back to the Campbell GT, Al Holbert has made his first pit stop, and it was flawless. New tires, a fill-up of fuel, and he was on his way. In fact, he hasn't lost his lead. Down to Steve Witt. Steve, everything A-OK -okay on Al Holbert's first pit stop. Nothing more than routine. The crew says the car isn't running any hotter than normal. Back to you. There you have it. Al Holbert's day remains bright. He leads this event. We'll have more after this short break. The Toyota Standard Bed Truck presents the 5998 Workout, a workout that shows you how the biggest standard engine in its class helped make Toyota the number one selling line of import trucks in America. And with that kind of power and performance, you get a lot of working out for your 5998. Now that's doing it right. And after a workout, a shower can be mighty refreshing. Oh, what a feeling. If you got plans coming up, change them. Do it. Rearrange them. Do it, do it, do it. Because you can get a large Godfather's pizza for the price of a medium. No coupon, just say a pizza you can't refuse when you order. Get a large for the price of a medium and do it soon. Do it, do it, do it. Got it? Order one. Order a dozen. But say a pizza you can't refuse when you order and get a large for the price of a medium. Do it. Godfather's pizza. Offer ends August 4th. Get Pennzoil, the Grand Prix motor oil, at G.I. Joe's. Pennzoil GT Performance Motor Oil. 2040 and 2050, your choice, just 99 cents a quart. Pennzoil 1040, also 99 cents a quart. And 30 weight, now 89 cents a quart. G.I. Joe's, for motor oil and all your automotive needs, G.I. Joe's is number one. Go for it, G.I. Joe's. The Toyota Standard Bed Truck presents the 5998 Workout, a workout that shows you how the biggest standard engine in its class helped make Toyota the number one selling line of import trucks in America. And with that kind of power and performance, you get a lot of working out for your 5998. Now that's doing it right. And after a workout, a shower can be mighty refreshing. Oh, what a feeling. More problems for the number 44 Jaguar. It has been involved in an accident just after turn six. As you can see, it's off the track. It'll have to come into the pits for repair. Meanwhile, the GTO leader, Don Devendorf, is in the pits, while his co-driver, Tony Adamowitz, is back on the track. They still lead Wayne Baker in the GTO competition. Down to Steve Wick for a report on Devendorf's first pit. Steve here with Don Devendorf, the leader in the GTO division. Uh, Don, how's the car running? You've got a more than a lap lead. Well, the car's running perfectly right now, knock on wood, as a signal were, but uh, as long as we can keep it pointed in the right direction, it seems to be running well. We're getting very good uh, fuel economy. Uh, we're hoping to be able to finish it without another stop. The tires held up beautifully, and uh, uh, some of the variables we're concerned with seem to be working, you know, in our favor at this point. Uh, what about the heat? A lot of people complaining about it. Right now, no problem at all. Uh, you know, we're running at a very comfortable pace, and uh, we have a cool suit, it's operational, and uh, everything seems to be running smoothly. Back on the track, Al Holbert continues his skillful run around the PIR track. He leads by almost one lap, but now the John Morton Bob Lobenberg Lola, number 45 right here, is in the second place, while the Moretti crew is third. Down in the pits, you see the Jaguar crew working hard on the car after its crash just moments ago. Here's Steve. Steve, the Jaguar, and it was hit out there. Uh, driver Bill Adam here, what happened? I was passing uh, Wayne Baker's turbo Porsche. Uh, we had both just gone by Ralph Cook's Lola, which is going very, very slowly on the back straight. And uh, as I got past the Lola as well, I swung to pass Wayne. He obviously hadn't seen me as mirror because uh, you can see from the mark on the back of the car, I was almost all the way past him when he swerved over and hit me. Uh, it's just one of those lapses. It's, it's not deliberate or anything like that. Wayne's a very, very good driver, so it's, it's one of the unfortunate breaks of racing. What's the damage to the car? Broken steering arm right now, so we'll get that repaired and get back out. 
well, whatever chance the Jaguar had is now apparently gone. The race coming down to three cars. Holbert, this man, Bob Lobenberg. Oh, look out, he's lost it on turn nine. He's in the grass and he's stalled. Horrible break for the Lobenberg Morton team. Now look at this, he started again, he backs right out of his nose and he's headed for the pits. What a piece of driving that could have saved him second place. Challenging for that spot is Jean Piero Moretti and his co driver, Sal Vandermeer. They're now trying to take over that second spot. Now, this team is running well today, maybe better than most people expected. Believe it or not, Moretti really doesn't like this format. He basically says a three hour race is nonsense. Yeah. Do you enjoy the three hour format? No, 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 absolutely. I hate the uh, long races. I like one hour or 100 miles give all what you have, all what the car can give, and then finish. Instead to change drivers, a lot of things that I don't like. Then I go bored when I, for the long race, three hours is still okay, but six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, it's, it's no more racing, it's just a, a mobile economy run, you know. Speaking of economy runs, Bob Lobenberg took an unusual path to the pits moments ago. He's standing by with Steve Witt. Steve here with Bob Lobenberg, who just had the spin on turn nine. Bob, what happened out there? The nose of the car just came off. Well, we, we, ho we were hoping that I'd be able to come in and go back out with just a fuel stop without changing tires. And if you notice that the tires are down to the cords. They just weren't going to make it. And with all the oil out on the track, track surface was uh, real slippery so uh, it was just a matter of time before I fell off and thank gosh we fell off right here in front of the pits where I could start it back up drive right in put a new nose on it change drivers put some fuel in it and new tires okay you've had two pit stops now do you plan to make another one this uh, is this gonna take care of the second one? well we hope we won't have to make another one if we do it'll be just an in and right back out with a spot of fuel Lobenberg and crew still have an excellent shot in this race. However, they're now a lap down to this man, Al Holbert, who is just continuing his awesome display of driving. This race is now just short of two hours old. In the GTU competition, here's your leader. It continues to be the Roger Mandeville Amos Johnson car. This number 38 Mazda RX-7. It just completed a fine pit stop. Steve Wick is with Mandeville. Well, the track is as greasy as it always gets here after a while, but overall it's good. There are no bad spots anywhere. Car's doing well. My cool suit didn't work as usual. Uh, it's pretty warm. I think if we can hold the pace that we're running, we, we should do well. So we're looking for a good finish. Okay, Roger Mandeville's Mazda RX-7 out in the lead in the GTU division. Steve, back to you. We're entering the final hour of this three-hour test. Al Holbert leads the GT competition. Don Diemendorf's crew is on top of the GTO battle. And Roger Mandeville's team leads the GTU. Back with more after this timeout. If you've got plans coming up, change them. Do it. Rearrange them. Do it, do it, do it. Because you can get a large Godfather's pizza for the price of a medium. No coupon, just say a pizza you can't refuse when you order. Get a large for the price of a medium and do it soon. Do it, do it, do it. Got it? Order one. Order a dozen. But say a pizza you can't refuse when you order and get a large for the price of a medium. Do it, Godfather's pizza. Offer ends August 4th. A sports car performing on a racetrack, that's expected. A Toyota SR5 sport truck doing it, that's incredible. But it's this kind of incredible performance that's helped make Toyota the number one selling line of import trucks in America. And as incredible as this Toyota handles, that's how smooth and comfortable it rides. That's incredible. That's doing it right. Oh, 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 oh what a feeling, Toyota. Yesterday's engines didn't have to work hard to power the average car. Today's smaller engines don't have it so easy. They rev higher and work harder. That's why there's Castrol. Even at high revs, Castrol doesn't suffer a significant loss of viscosity. And that's important, because if you make things too hard on your engine, your engine could make things hard on you. Castrol, engineered for smaller cars. Castrol 1040 and 2050 on sale this week for 89 cents at G.I. Joe's. A Toyota standard bed truck presents the 5998 workout. 
a workout that shows you how the biggest standard engine in its class helped make Toyota the number one selling line of import trucks in America. And with that kind of power and performance, you get a lot of working out for your 5998. Now that's doing it right. And after a workout, a shower can be mighty refreshing. As this race wears on, it's becoming more apparent Al Holbert is going to be extremely tough to beat. This man is just not making any mistakes. We understand his car isn't running 100%. They're experiencing a turbine problem, but as you can see, it's not playing a major factor. Holbert remains a lap up on his closest competition, the Lobenberg Morton and Moretti Vandermeer teams. When you talk about Al Holbert, the racer, you talk about experience, intelligence, and a love for the sport. Uh, ever since I was old enough to be have any responsibility, you know, to the extent of holding a rag in my hand, uh, you know, I've been involved in it. So I've just never known anything else. So I guess what keeps you in it every once in a while, you have a real good year like this year. And that makes up for the other years that are, uh, you know, an uphill battle all the way. Holbert was supposed to have an all-out battle with the Jaguar today, but it never really developed. The Group 44 car is having yet more problems. Steve Wick is in the mix. Steve, it just isn't the Jaguar's day today. Bill Adams just brought the car in again. Apparently, it was having an overheating problem. They checked it over and sent him back out again. Back to you. Well, some major contrast today. The Jaguar hasn't had anything go right, where Holbert has run a perfect race, as has the Devendorf Datsun ZX number 83 here. They continue to lead the GTO division by a comfortable margin. Their day has gone well from start to finish. Devendorf has driven the first hour and a half. You heard him say they're trying to make it on one pit stop. That'll be up to Tony Adamowitz, who's in the car right now. Devendorf and Adamowitz, a team proving very successful the past three weeks. Two drivers, Tony Adamowitz and myself, are very consistent and well matched to the car, and, and uh, we can maintain a very good even pace, and it's going to be tough for the other teams to match, I hope. Let's break away from this event for a moment to show you one of the other races that took place today, the Kelly American Challenge, and it's worth watching. Kelly American Challenge, Craig Carter in his Chevy Camaro is the man to beat. He's a comfortable leader in the standings. An interesting matchup, though, deals with Tommy Riggins in his Monte Carlo, currently fifth in points, and Robert Overby, sixth in points in a Buick. You could tell right at the start of this race it was going to be a wild one. Watch Robert Overby charge into turn one after the green flag, beating pole sitter Craig Carter to the punch. Overby takes over first place, and he leads early in this race until disaster strikes. Watch what happens as it comes down the long stretch. This is the last thing you'd want happen to you on the freeway. A blown engine for Overby, that immediately takes him out of the race. His car is finished for the weekend. Well, thanks to Overby's mishap, Carter takes over the number one position. And this race quickly turns into a battle between Carter and the white number 12 car driven by Tommy Riggins. They begin a battle that would last the entire race. Those two begin to pull away from the field, but the action is just beginning. Patty Moise and Clay Young begin a rivalry with third place at stake. Finally, their confrontation heats up on turn one. Young tries to beat Moise inside. Patty shuts him down, and look what happens. They both go into a spin and off the track. Moise ends up the fortunate one. She's able to continue immediately after the spin, while Young stalls and struggles in the grass. That run-in saves third place for Patty. The only two drivers to finish in front of her are Carter and Riggins. Their battle goes to the final lap. Riggins tries hard, but he just can't make up enough ground. Carter hangs on to win the Kelly American Challenge. It was a tough one. Tommy was, a, Tommy was working her for all she was worth, and it didn't give me no break at all. We had a little meet there, and it punctured my tire, I guess, when I got off course or when he hit me. And I was able to keep my engine going and get back get back on the track. And I don't know what happened with him, but I know he didn't get back on. And I kept going and had a very tough last few laps. Again, Craig Carter the winner, his second straight victory at Portland. Tommy Riggins finished second. Patty Moise was third. Back to the GT race, Al Holbert continues to lead, and his competition is starting to drop out. The Moretti Vandermeer car is in the pits with what seems to be a major problem. Down to Steve Wick with Sal Vandermeer. 
something happened. What was it? Well, the gear shift started tightening up until eventually they couldn't gear, change gears, and that's when I came in. It looks like something came loose somewhere. They're busy trying to find out what it was. Do you think you'll be able to get it back out on the track? Well, as I said, I hope so. They've been there for five minutes, which costs us quite a few places, but uh, they're working on it. Okay, the way it stands right now, Al Holbert in this number 14 Porsche March has a comfortable lead. His closest competition is right here, the Lobenberg Morton Lola, which is one lap down with about 45 minutes to go. So it's looking as if Holbert could win the series championship today if he can stay out of trouble and keep his car running. Meanwhile, Don Diebendorf's Datsun ZX is still way in front in the GTO competition, as is this car, Roger Mandeville's Mazda, in the GTU race. Now, this is the first year this race has been combined with the GT and GTO competition. In years past, Mandeville and his cohorts have had their own GTU race, but that situation is history now. The three-hour endurance race is here. Well, I think from, from a purely selfish standpoint, uh, we don't get the exposure uh, by running as a group that we did running individually. Uh, that naturally, you can't avoid that because you have some uh, uh, faster cars running with us that are probably more glorious in the public eye and generally attract the media attention more so than a GTU car will. Uh, it's, I think, uh, a fact of life. I think that it, uh, from a pr promotional standpoint, it probably makes sense to run all three divisions together. My preference would be to run strictly GTU. Unfortunately, that's not available, so we're running as a group. Whatever the case, Mandeville and crew have run a flawless race today. They continue to lead the GTU competition. Their car has run perfectly. But we can't say that about the Jaguar. Steve? Steve, they're clearing out the Jaguar piss. The Jaguar is now in the paddock. A victim of a blown head gasket, the Jaguar out of the race at the two and a half hour mark. Steve, back to you. Okay, Steve, you have more action down there. Here comes your leader, Al Holbert. This will no doubt be his final pit stop. It looks as if the tires on the right side of the car will be changed and he'll take some fuel. Remember, he has no co-driver. He's been in that hot car for about two and a half hours and he's going out to finish up the race. Remember, if he can hold on to first place, the series championship is his. Steve, what about that pit stop? Steve, if Al Holbert loses this race, it won't be because of pit stops. The two times he's been in have been very quick, but he still has that turbine boost problem. But this race only has about a half an hour left to go. And the crew says Al's just nursing it around, and uh, he should be able to make it to the checkered flag first in just a half an hour. Back to you. Well, we'll find out soon. Al Holbert is trying to hold on to his lead coming down the final stretch of the Camel GT. Back with a conclusion after a commercial timeout. Yesterday's engines didn't have to work hard to power the average car. Today's smaller engines don't have it so easy. They rev higher and work harder. That's why there's Castrol. Even at high revs, Castrol doesn't suffer a significant loss of viscosity. And that's important, because if you make things too hard on your engine, your engine could make things hard on you. Castrol, engineered for smaller cars. Castrol 1040 and 2050 on sale this week for 89 cents at G.I. Joe's. The Toyota Standard Bed Truck presents the 5998 Workout. A workout that shows you how the biggest standard engine in its class helped make Toyota the number one selling line of import trucks in America. And with that kind of power and performance, you get a lot of working out for your 5998. Now that's doing it right. And after a workout, a shower can be mighty refreshing. Oh, what a feeling. If you've got plans coming up, change them. Do it. Rearrange them. Do it, do it, do it. Because you can get a large Godfather's pizza for the price of a medium. No coupon, just say a pizza you can't refuse when you order. Get a large for the price of a medium and do it soon. Do it, do it, do it. Got it? Order one. Order a dozen. But say a pizza you can't refuse when you order and get a large for the price of a medium. Do it. Godfather's pizza. Offer ends August 4th. The four-wheel drive decathlon. Ten reasons Toyota is the best-selling import 4x4 in America. This Toyota takes on hills, trails, streams, and mud holes. It clears rocks, it takes on deserts, 
and beaches. It's built to work and play. This Toyota's a champion at doing it right. Oh, oh, oh what a feeling, Toyota. Back at the G.I. Joe's Grand Prix, here is the leader in the three-hour Camel GT. Car number 14, driven by Al Holbert, he still remains one lap in front of his closest competition, the Morton Lobenberg Lola. Holbert is finished with his pit stops. He made his last run through the pits with a half an hour left to go in the race. He just received some fuel and two new tires, so he should be able to hang on. No change in the GTO competition. The Devendorf Datsun ZX is comfortably in front. In fact, it's running third overall behind Holbert and the Lola. Tony Adamowitz is in the driver's seat right now. Remember, they've only made one pit stop today. It looks as if they're confident they can make it home on that one stop. And the GTU competition is still controlled by the Mandeville Mazda RX-7. This team has run a smooth, airless race today. It looks as if they'll keep their lead, win the race, and continue to head their point standings. It was also an exciting day at the track Saturday with one race taking place. It's called the Renault Alliance Cup. Here's a look at what happened. This is maybe the closest race consistently on the series, and it's not hard to understand why. These are identical Renault Alliance cars. Nobody has a power advantage. As a result, drafting and pure driver skill play major roles in winning races. Saturday's field consisted of 35 cars, and that's small compared to some of their races. And as you can see, this event is a wild one. With so many cars, you're bound to have mishaps. And Saturday's race was no different. Ahead of the pack, we saw two cars battling it out for most of the race. Number 08, Lance Stewart, and number 8, Ray Kong. They went at it from start to finish, stealing the lead from each other as each lap passed. Finally, when the checker flag dropped, it was Kong finishing on top, Mitch Wright finished second, and Stewart slipped to third. On the victory stand, you can see the enthusiasm of these drivers. For Kong, it was his second straight victory. You are watching the big story at PIR this weekend, Al Holbert driving this portion march throughout the entire three-hour endurance race this weekend. He stepped inside the car just before 2 o'clock. It's now a couple minutes after 5, and Holbert is on his last lap before he receives the checkered flag. You've heard Steve Wick in the pits mention Al's car has not been running up to par, but he got off to a quick start and has done an excellent job keeping his machine in the lead. Al Holbert will win his sixth race on the series this year. Today's victory will clinch the series championship for his team. Here he comes. Al Holbert takes the checkered flag to win this year's Camel GT. He finishes over 55 seconds in front of his closest competition, the Morton Lobenberg Lola. Here comes the GTO winner, and no surprise here, Don Devendorf and Tony Adamo win their third straight race on this series after a rough start this year. They only made one pit stop today in winning this race easily. And finally, the GTU winner, the Mandeville Mazda RX-7. This is Amos Johnson crossing the finish line. Mandeville started the race, Johnson finished it. The two stay on top of the series point standings. Here are the winners. Oh, it feels good. I mean, you know, they, I, I've said it a time, time or two, we have a team, and Jim Truman's part of that team, and unfortunately Jim couldn't make it today. And with the little problems we had with the car, we were better off me just staying in. Uh, you know, had we run, had a run, well, there's a lot of things to consider. The car was broken at the end, so I had to drive it very, very hard. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, Morton hadn't had a problem early on, he might have been closer and made it that much tougher. Tony ran, and, uh, you know, the fuel light came on. Uh, just started, I guess, the lap before the last lap, and he's coming in for fueling on the very last lap, and the, the light was on, but they, they dropped the checkered, and all he had to do was come around there, so he sent him on. Well, we had quite a bit of competition. The uh, Bergstrom Winter uh, Turbo Porsche that we were running against had led us early in the race when Roger was in the car, and Roger uh, managed to get back ahead of him when they had to, to pit earlier than we did because of their fuel consumption. And uh, when he turned it over to me, we had about a lap lead on him, and uh, my job was to keep him from catching back up, and we finished with a lap lead on it. Congratulations to you all, a job very well done. 
As we look at Victory Lane, we'll take a short break. We'll return with a final word, recapping the day's action in just a minute. The four-wheel drive decathlon. Ten reasons Toyota is the best-selling import 4x4 in America. This Toyota takes on hills, trails, streams, and mud holes. It clears rocks, it takes on deserts and beaches. It's built to work and play. This Toyota's a champion at doing it right. For the biggest selection in automotive, G.I. Joe's is number one. Shop G.I. Joe's for Motocraft oil filters, now $3.49 each, and Motocraft spark plugs, resistor 97 cents each, non-resistor 87 cents each. That's G.I. Joe's, where you'll find the largest selection of automotive products anywhere. And quality Motocraft oil filters and spark plugs on sale now. Go for it, G.I. Joe's. The Toyota Standard Bed Truck presents the 5998 Workout. A workout that shows you how the biggest standard engine in its class helped make Toyota the number one selling line of import trucks in America. And with that kind of power and performance, you get a lot of working out for your 5998. Now that's doing it right. And after a workout, a shower can be mighty refreshing. This weekend of racing has produced six races, six quality events, and you may be asking yourself, why do these racers do what they do? Well, hopefully this story will answer your question. Well, you better enjoy it day to day. That's what you better do. If you try to enjoy what you're doing, I could be sitting behind a desk somewhere. That's what I was trained to do. I could be a banker or something, I suppose. But uh, we try to enjoy it. We'll, we'll do it as, as long as as we can physically and enjoy it at the same time. Maybe easier said than done. The racing industry is a grind during the racing months of the year as well as the off season. Either you're racing or you're rebuilding your car, looking for new sponsors, earning money so you can race next year. Total dedication is the key phrase that leads to success. And the reasons for stepping into the fast lane are as different as night and day. I'm in it for one reason, that's to win. Uh, there's, of course, like 40 cars in every race. Not everybody can win. Not everybody really wants to win or expects to win, but the way I see it, uh, I'm in this thing for one reason. That's to do the best job I can for the man who owns the car, to do the best job I can do for our sponsors, Budweiser in this case, uh, and to do the best job for Gene Felton. I've just never known anything else. So I guess what keeps you in it, every once in a while, you have a real good year like this year, and that makes up for the other years that are, uh, you know, an uphill battle all the way. Whether it be for pure enjoyment or keeping the family tradition, the bottom line is the drivers are on the track flirting with 200 mile an hour speeds, a situation where one mistake could cost a life. The real bottom line is the competitiveness of Bob Tullius, I guess. Uh, it's just a, it's a way of life for me, and uh, I wouldn't do it any different. And if you check with each driver, they'd probably leave you with that same impression. They simply enjoy it because they're down to earth, competitive people. Each race is different, a different racetrack calling for different situations, but the end result is the most satisfying. There's nothing like winning, and uh, there's only one winner, and that's first place, and that's what I'm after. Again, the winner of the 1983 G.I. Joe's Grand Prix, Al Holbert in a Porsche March. He drove the entire three-hour race by himself. Officially, he finished 55.15 seconds in front of the Lobenberg Morton Lola. Holbert completed 150 laps at an average speed of 96.916 miles per hour. This is his sixth victory of the year. His team officially clinches the GT Championship Series for 1983. Don Devendorp and Tony Adamowitz won the GTO competition in their Datsun ZX. They finished third overall, and that's incredible considering it's a GTO car. Roger Mandeville and Amos Johnson picked up the GTU trophy. They trailed early in the race, but when Joe Vardy made a pit stop to repair some problems, Mandeville took the lead and never gave it up. Kelly American Challenge, Craig Carter won his second straight race in Portland, winning a tough battle with Tommy Riggins to cross the finish line first. 
Cal Choquette won the champion spark plug challenge, waiting for Joe Vardy to break down before cruising to an easy victory. And in Saturday's Renault Cup, it was Ray Kong winning for the second straight week, edging out Mitch Wright and Lance Stewart in a traditionally close race in this series. So that does it for this year. Another G.I. Joe's Grand Prix is history. Our congratulations to all the winners and those who took part in this year's event. For all of us at Channel 2, I'm Steve Arena. Good night from the races. Thank you.